Recently, I finally started my own business and it is in dream interpretation. So the reason why I decided to make a business out of this is because after a lot of reading Jung and other writers about symbolism and about the unconscious, I started to gain understanding about the unconscious and I started to see patterns and I started to see patterns in my own dreams and so then I started to randomly interpret dreams of uh, other people and I started to do this on Instagram and because the feedback was so positive I decided to start a business out of it and so interpreting dreams will be the first step into becoming a real Jungian psychoanalyst. So what exactly is the use of understanding your dreams? Well, dreams are a manifestation of the unconscious. And as Jung puts it, the unconscious is nature. And nature never lies. So if you want to take a good look into your true self, into your unconscious, then you'll have to look at your dreams. And of course, there are also other ways to take a look into your own unconscious. Um, but for now, I'm just focusing on dreams. And so what I noticed is that many people have dreams of their shadow side or of their anima or animus. And these terms I explained on my website. You can find the link down below. Um, uh, you can find it under a Jungian dictionary. There I explained all the Jungian terms and it will give you a clear view of these different aspects of the psyche and the unconscious. One of the terms that Jung uses a lot is individuation. So individuation is to become conscious of your own conscience and thus to become whole, not to repress certain aspects of your psyche in your unconscious and just live in some kind of half reality um, in which you are not truly yourself. So the path towards individuation is to become conscience of your own conscience and one way of doing that is by understanding your dreams but these days you can see that many people are not whole I think it is very exceptionally when someone aims for individuation most people they repress certain aspects of their psyche in their own conscience and when people start doing that, that's actually what Jung called a neurosis. These days, people call that depression or anxiety or anorexia or substance abuse or addiction. Um, and also, and I know this is very controversial and very, very sensitive subject, but also homophilia and transgenderism. Um, those are actually forms of neurosis and there's actually no scientific evidence that all these different um, disorders, they call it, are significantly different. Actually there is much overlap between all of them and that is, I believe, because we're talking about neurosis actually. Uh, but people felt the need to take that term apart and divide it up into I don't know how many terms but essentially they're the same thing it's neurosis and neurosis as I said before is when certain aspects of your psyche they are being repressed into the unconscious it's actually the splitting of your psyche neurosis is the splitting of it and psychosis is when the splitting is completed when different aspects of your psyche are completely separated from each other that's psychosis and so during a psychosis then suddenly these aspects of your psyche could be like uh, the anima or animus or shadow or any other kind of archetype it completely takes over and so the person 
uh, becomes possessed by it. And so I guess it's like um, dreaming, some kind of dreaming while you are awake. Um, I can't be too sure about this because I never experienced a psychosis, but I do think it's really, really interesting. And this is how I imagine it, that you're actually awake, but you're just taken over by an aspect of your unconscious and it's like dreaming while you are awake like your reality is kind of distorted but that doesn't mean that these things aren't real because they are real the archetypes are real so it's not like you're living in a fantasy world it's just that your world suddenly is or your perception is suddenly different from other people and you are not really in control anymore and so a neurosis is the in-between phase um, it's it's actually a warning a warning of the psyche of um, that you are heading towards a psychosis that doesn't mean that when you are neurotic that you will eventually become psychotic uh, at one point in your life it doesn't have to mean that at all but it is a warning of your psyche and so like I mentioned before, anxiety, depression, anorexia, um, addiction, um, panic attacks, but that is anxiety, okay, <laughs> homophilia, transgender things, I, I never really know how to name that, um, they call it gender dysphoria. Uh, or gender identity. They, they keep changing the names in psychology. It's terrible. Also for alcoholism, now it's alcohol use dependence. Uh, and so yeah, and this with with all these these um, disorders, let's say they they keep changing the names. It's very very annoying. So let's just stick with neurosis. So neurosis is actually some kind of disbalance between conscience and unconscious. It's like an, uh, a phase of unrest between those two. And I always um, name the example of abortion because I think that it, this is a very clear example that many women, they believe, they're like feminists and they believe in women's rights and then they believe in abortion, that they have the right for abortion and and then they they go for it but in the unconscious mother nature is screaming and fighting because she wants to protect her child because after all it's your child in your belly and no matter what your political opinions are no matter what your personal opinions are mother nature is there and you can't ignore her and if you do so and you only live by the ideas of your conscience which are most of the time not even your own ideas but are the ideas of the context you're in the culture you're in the family you're in the, the friends you surround yourself with and then when you ignore your own unconscious when you ignore nature then these, these two aspects of your psyche, they collide. They are not in harmony anymore. And then the unrest begins. And then the neurosis starts. And the neurosis can express itself, as I mentioned before, how people view it these days, in depression, anxiety, anorexia, blah, blah. And I think you by now also notice that many, 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 many people suffer from these things. A lot of people. And so are all these people then neurotic? I think so. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm afraid the answer is yes. And it is not so strange. And this is something that Jung described uh, extensively in his book, uh, The Symbolic Life. I love that book. <laughs> it actually uh, exists from a lot of talks of him and essays so it's not like it's not meant as a book actually it's a collection of, um, of essays and, and lectures oh, it's it's amazing he talks a lot about what is wrong with society and 
one major thing that's wrong with society these days, with modern society, we focus only on rationality. Everything has to be rational. And then people start to believe that, oh, be because we are not as crazy and emotional as the people in the past, we are rational. We are smart. Now we are enlightened. Okay, but look around. Look around. What has that brought us? In my opinion, well, it has brought us technology. But that's it. People are neurotic on Mars. People are depressed and anxious. And that's really sad. And so Jung described also that we need a symbolic life. Because the symbols, they mean something. The symbols, the archetypes, the stories, they're meaningful and they touch our unconscious. And unconsciously, we know that these things are meaningful. And eventually, we want to live a meaningful life. That's the point, to live a meaningful life. But if you only focus on rationality, like what is rational about life itself then? What, what, like John Peterson always says, like life is suffering. So why then would you live if you suffer? Why would you live? It's not rational to live while you're suffering, you know? Well, it's because it should be meaningful. The suffering should be meaningful and life should be meaningful. And then it's worth living. And where can we find this meaning? Well, it's all around us actually. But if you only focus on rationality, you will be blind for it. And at one point in your life, you will become neurotic. These problems of neurosis and psychosis are not just individual problems. They are problems of society. As in, like, there, there are many people who wrote a lot about the masses. You know, mass psychology, totalitarianism. A, a, lot, of, a lot of great philosophers or political theorists or psychologists that wrote about the psychology of the masses. And so I think that Jung is right when he says that we are in a psychological epidemic. He says that um, before World War II, people were like, oh no, there's not going to be a war anymore here in Europe because we have become too reasonable for that. We have become too rational. And then a few years later, World War II came and people became possessed by archetypes and that's beyond all logic you know these things the masses they don't fare on logic they fare on that fire that is burning within and that fire is always burning but you only have to throw some fuel on it you only have to speak to the crowds and touch upon the archetypes and then you will get that fire burning and everything the masses do or feel or think is irrational and not logical at all. And so that is what we have been seeing last year, last one and a half year actually. Nothing that has happened is rational or logical, nothing. Like this whole pandemic is more a psychological pandemic. The virus is in the mind. And that is pretty scary actually, because how are you going to solve that? You're not going to solve that with a vaccine, you know? <laughs> um, but it is possible. It will take a long time, but once people start to realize that life is irrational and that's okay and once people start to face their own shadow and not just look at the other like you're the one doing everything wrong 
you're the one, you're, you're the racist, you're the fascist, you're the conspiracy theorist, you're the, the sheep, you're the whatever. Don't blame others. Look at yourself. Look at yourself and, and try to figure out what you yourself are contributing to the problem. What you yourself are doing wrong. And you know, everybody does something wrong. Nobody is perfect and that's okay. But the first step into solving these problems is to look into your own psyche and be very critical upon yourself and be very honest and that takes courage and then work on it face your own shadow so start looking at your dreams take them seriously they are your unconscious they are telling you something they will tell you what to do but you have to understand the language and if you don't understand it I can help you with that so the link to my website I put down below and feel free to look around and maybe we'll see each other. Bye bye.